Hey guys, welcome to Programmer. In my previous video, I had talked about how to create a default navigation bar with the basic features. In this tutorial, we'll see how to up the navigation bar with additional features such as first, how to add an image or a logo, second, how to have drop downs in your nav bar, third, how to add forms, fourth, how to add buttons, and fifth, how to add plain text, which is not a link. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to see is how to add an image or a logo to the navbar. Okay, so first let's start off with a, a default navigation bar. Okay, and uh, here I have an inverse navigation bar. I'm going to replace the text logo with an image. I've already downloaded an image. So I'm going to replace the text with an image tag. And in the SRC attribute, I'm going to give the name of the image along with the extension. And I'm going to add the class image responsive. This tells Bootstrap to make my image responsive. So if you view it in tablets or smaller phones, it'll adjust accordingly. So when I refresh, I get something like this. Notice how the image is a separate entity. This is because the class Navar brand has its own padding and margin which is appropriate for text and not for a logo or an image. So all you have to do is change the CSS, make margin as zero and padding as zero. So once you've done that, when you refresh, notice the margin and the padding gone, but still the image sticks out. So all you have to do is reduce the size of the image to fit into your nav bar. So I'm going to add the class logo to my image tag so that I can change the CSS of my image. So I'm just going to add extra styles. I'm going to make the height 50 pixel and I'm just adding left and right padding so that it look prettier. So once I save this and refresh, you'll notice the change. So it'll, now, now it fits into the nav bar and it looks better, like it should, like a logo should. So that's all about how to add an image or a logo. The first thing that you need to remember is to add an image tag. The second is to remove the original margin and padding that comes with the class navbar brand. Okay, so now let's see how to add a drop down to the navbar. Say I want to add a drop down menu to the products list. All I have to do is add the class drop down to the list tag and then in my link tags or in my a tags, I need to add the class drop down toggle and then the attribute data toggle should be set to drop down. Then comes the products, the name of the link itself. And then you need a small caret symbol next to the link to suggest to the user that it's a drop down, that it contains a drop down menu. So that's what that span class equal to caret statement is for. So what you need to remember here is to add the class drop down and to add the class drop down toggle. So let's save and refresh and you'd notice a small caret symbol next to products. But there isn't anything else because we haven't added any list items to the menu. So let's go ahead and add some list items. Let's create an unordered list and you need to add the class drop down menu. Remember the header link will contain the class drop down and your sub menus will contain the class drop down menu. So let's just go ahead and add some random list items. I'm just going to copy paste three list items and let's save and refresh this. Okay, so there you go. You have three list items in your drop down menu. Say you want to separate certain list items in your drop down menu with a horizontal line. That can be achieved by using this statement role, a list item, role separator, and a class divider. So when I refresh the page, it will look something like a horizontal line that separates groups of list items or menu items. So after the horizontal line, I can add another list item and give it a link, say a new link or something. And now you'll notice, so the new link is separated from the list of the link tags, from the rest of the links, I mean. So the main thing to remember in a dropdown is to add the class dropdown then to add the class drop down toggle and the drop down menu class. And of course, in case you want a separator, you need to add the class divider and 
specify its role as separator. The next thing we're going to see is how to add a form. Usually in the navbar, we come across a lot of login forms, like you have the username and the password and the sign in button. So let's see how to do that. You need to first have the form tags and then have the class navbar form. So the class navbar form will add form elements inside the navbar. And this navbar right is not needed for now. I'll tell you what that does later. Okay, then you need to add the class form group to the div element. What this does is, it adds proper padding if you have more than one input. And we do have more than one input. We have two inputs, one for the username and one for the password. So our input type is text. Your username and password is going to be text. And the class form control is added to give proper padding and alignment to your form elements. And in the placeholder text, you can give whatever you like. We'll come back to the submit button later. Uh, for now, we'll just save this and refresh and so that looks pretty good. It's properly aligned, there's proper padding around the form elements. You can see that the placeholder text username and password is shown. But I feel that the form is pretty clumped together with the rest of my links. I want to move it to the right. So all I have to do now is add the class navbar right to the form tag. And when I say and refresh, you'll notice that it has moved to the right. And, and this, looks, this looks so much more better than it being clumped together. And it's always easier when you have your form to in the right side of your navbar. Let's talk about the submit button. So you need to put that within the button tag and the type is submit. And the class is btn, short for button. That's the class used in Bootstrap. And now this button prim btn primary specifies the color of your button. You can have primary, you can have success. There's default and there's danger and there's just one more which I've forgotten. Success is green, default is white, primary is blue and danger is red. And I basically like, like red. So now we'll just use danger and we'll refresh this and see how it looks. There you go. I feel like red suits it better, suits my page better. Also, you'll notice that when I hover above the, above the button, it changes color. And when I click the button, you can see a light blue outline around it. So those are uh, styles that Bootstrap adds to your button. Okay, but what if you don't want a login form? What if you want a form like the one on Microsoft's homepage, like a search form with the search symbol? That's pretty simple too. It's, it's exactly the same. Okay, it's almost the same as the login form for a couple changes. This also starts with the form tags and the class navbar form. The class navbar left you can add if you want or you cannot add if you don't want. The one difference is you add the class input group to the div, the, to the div element. The input group attaches an icon or a help text next to the input field. This will help us attach the search symbol next to our input field. And the input type text is exactly the same. Okay, the input group btn class also does exactly the same as the input group, except that it's a button. Okay, so what's a glyphicon? This glyphicon is what's going to help us add the search symbol. I'll talk more about this later, so I'm just going to save and refresh this. And there you go, you have the input field and you have the search button. The search button is basically a glyphicon, which is added as a separate button next to the input field. So what's a glyphicon? Glyphicon is basically a symbol. It's more like a glyph. I think it's, it's pronounced as glyphicon. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I really don't know. Uh, Bootstrap contains over 250 glyphicons or glyphicons, however that's pronounced. I think it's glyphicons. You can choose any of them and add whichever class you, whichever one you like. So say I want the home glyphicon. I, all I have to do is add the class just below the symbol into my code and I'll get that glyphicon. So all I have to do is change search to home. And when I refresh, you'd see that it becomes the home symbol. Now let's see how to add a button to your navbar. In case your button is part of a form group, then there's nothing to worry. All you have to do is add the class btn to your button tag and the class form group will take care of everything else. The margin, the padding, the alignment, all the CSS is taken care of by the form group. But what if your button is a separate entity? 
what if it doesn't belong to any form group and it's just another entity in your navbar? So you start with a button tag and you give the type as submit and let's say the button reads click me. So when you save and refresh this, ah, the button is awkwardly positioned somewhere. So what you have to do is you need to add the class navbar btn. So the class navbar btn tells bootstrap that this is a button which belongs to the navbar so please add the respective styles that you usually do for any element in the navbar and then you can probably add a color to the button if you want i'm just adding a green color by using the success class and there you go that's all you need to know about buttons the navbar btn is the only class you need to keep in mind the last thing we're going to see how to do is to add plain text which is not a link. You just want to add some plain text to your navbar, like say you want to add the name of a company or something on your navbar. That's, that's really simple, very, very simple to do, the simplest of everything. All you need is a paragraph tag and you need to remember the class navbar text and you're good to go. The, a paragraph tag and the class navbar text is all this requires. I've just used an additional class text that is a I have defined that class because I wanted to add some CSS to my text as you can see. So you, you just have to add the class navbar text and I've just used some inline CSS to show that that's also possible in HTML. So now when I save and refresh this you'd probably notice something like this. Cool. Text which is not a link home about products or links but my navbar is just text so what happens in case i don't use the class it's the same as with the button in case i don't use the class navbar text the text goes in and just sticks somewhere to the top of the navbar so all you have to do is remember to add the class navbar text and you're good to go so to review we saw how to create a navbar with an image with a drop down a drop down menu with a separator, a form with two input fields and a form with an input, input field and an add-on. Then we saw how to create a button which is part of a form and a separate button. Finally, we saw how to add plain text to the navbar which is not a link. So if you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to know how to create a default or a standard navigation bar, I've left a link in the description below. Do check it out. and. Do subscribe if you want more videos like these. Thanks for watching.